Good day to y'all. Um, today is April 15, 2017, and for the people across the globe, I'd like to wish them a happy Easter. And as for my people here, happy Easter Eve. But in advance, anyway, happy Easter, because you know the deal. We do one show and one show only for the weekend. It's not a. We don't do two shows in just one weekend, technically. Um, anyway, we got a huge show, a very huge show for you today, a basket full, full episode today. Um, apparently, from what I'm seeing, there's been nothing new. Oh, but, but, but Matthew, what about them Smurfs? Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I could give a flying fuck less about the Smurfs. Listen, I'm just going to close this door for a sec. Just try to bear with me here. Uh, this is Easter. My family is lit today. Actually, it's the day before Easter. My family is lit, lit the usual, so they're making a crap ton of noise. Let me sit my ass back down and let me continue here. Listen, the Smurfs belong where they belong, and that is Warner Brothers. They belong to their 1980s cartoon, nothing beyond that. Because remember Smurfs 2? That was the most disgusting piece of crap I have ever laid eyes on. Like, this is the most lowest Sony can go. Go. People thought the Emoji movie is going to be bad. This, the Smurfs is bad. Like, Peyo, I think that's the name of the creator, didn't want an anti-Smurf. Didn't want no, no, how I say this, um, I can't, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, um, artificial Smurf or whatever it is on my, I, I, it's, it's, it's in my head. I have it on the tip of my, I have it on the tip of my goddamn tongue. Um, what no semi metro or something I said? They don't want no fake ass Smurf. It's great also, and they were the most annoying characters ever. Like I hated my life. I hated them with a passion. Made me wish I did not spend thirteen dollars to go see that movie then. But back then I was just a bit little. I was like thirteen, so I really didn't care then. Then I was just going to my adolescent stage, and I'm still am. But anyway, if if push comes to shove, I said to myself, I'm never gonna see no more Smurf movie ever again. I don't want Sony to ruin this good this good franchise here. They've been through a lot. They already got bombed on a promotion for for a Belgian promotion, hence where they came from, because the Smurfs did come from Belgium. Um, the creator is of Belgium descent. Um, but nevertheless, I don't want. If anything, they've been through a lot. They've been through bombings, they've been through cancellations, they've been through reruns, even by Dees Entertainment. Like, Dees don't even own them. them um, they just been through a, through a crazy crap ton of stuff in the past, and the last thing they need is for Sony to make another stupid movie based off them. At least they're sticking to their 2D. Oh, did I say 2D? I meant 3D, but yet yeah, trying to compare it to the 2D original cartoon groups. Yeah. Don't listen. Um, I'm I'm not saying I hate the Smurfs, but if you really want to have a nice time with the Smurfs, I think Hulu or somebody has all the TV specials that are like an hour that's long, like the movie. I think that they're gonna be more worth your time than having to pay thirteen dollars and fifty cents just to see a CGI movie with a bunch of actors that have not little nothing to their name no more. Um. So yeah, apparently. This episode, since it's a holiday episode, I want to take things in a different direction. You know, around this time, big corporations usually sell out as usual. And you think, how would they do it? Of course, do the one thing they know well. Cringing us to hell and back. And apparently the one I'm talking about is far, far back. Now, do any of you know Chuck Woolery? If you don't, let me give you a quick introduction on it. Chuck Woolery is a game show host that was famous for hosting Wheel of Fortune before Pat Sajak did. And many other legendary game shows such as Love Connection, Scrabble, um, Greed. He hosted a good, good chunk of game shows that were pretty memorable. But apparently as the early 2000s came, his popular popularly faded and the only game show he was famous for at the time was Lingo. But there was one there was one that really tore him down. 
And that game show was called Naturally Stone. Um, and believe it or not, it's based off of Chuck Woolery's own album that he made with his Arvid Grandy band back in the 60s. So you want, and apparently, think about it, a song, a, a game show host and a singer-songwriter, and they com and they modern day commercial for the year of 2000, because this was like back in like the 2000s, early 2000s, so what was popular in the early 2000s? Um, I don't know, Slim Shady, aka Eminem, Snoop Dogg. Jay-Z, Ludacris, all that, and what we're gonna do? We're gonna go lower than how Eminem goes in his videos. At least Eminem got some comedic talent to him. Chuck, he's just an old man at this at that point. So with that being said, let's take a look, shall we? Check it out, Chuck W coming at you, trident. Oh, hold up. This goes by awfully quick. Yo, you, you ever saw these fish? Now I know how long, how far back these fishnet tights go. Have you ever, like, seen all those people with those fishnet tight tights? It's like, I just want to roast them, like, I just want to shout out. There's the catch of the day, you know, because they have these fishnet tights on it looks like they just actually been captured by a fish you know it'd be funny if those are them fat feminist girls because you know they'd be all because then you can actually call them whales because they're killer whales <laughs> all right that that was horrible let me shut my ass uh. You tried and true, sneaky, freaky, cheeky, yo, back in two and two, yeah the chuck wagon is taking you home so don't flip it just kick it with the naturally stone that's me Listen, this is the way he's rhyming doesn't sound bad, but it's just when it's the feeling of a middle aged man wearing lavender or whatever in God's name is that baggy clothes, it, it kind of raised the question. Shin, why would you do this? The big C on the Gazame Show, does that work? Chili, chili, wanna really? You wanna talk smack? I say snap, take it back to the whack shack, Jack. No Ooh, you hear that? That that's some sick roast Chuck got there. Mm, you want to talk some shit to him? Get out of here. You heard that? Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> wow, wow. I'm, I'm happy I was a little kid when this came out. I, I, oh. Bones. My act is home. I'm a plucky, lucky Chucky, and I'm naturally stoned. Yo, Chuck Woolery naturally stoned. The whole new reality. Alright, I, I gotta stop this video there, cause for one, one, you, that, that, that's just no way, like the guy was like 50 something years old, there, there must have been like a turntable beneath there. And not to mention, let's just go back for a sec. Hold on. You can, you can just see the pain in his face when he's doing that. When he's just splitting his legs up like that, you can just see the pain like that. Oh. Uh, Oh man. Alright then. Then so that was our first piece of cringe right there. It was not so bad. It was just corporate bastards pandering to the youth through game shows, which are ironically only nerds would only watch, but even nerds back then would have cringed to the slightest extent. Alright, so then so here's another piece of cringe we're gonna be talking to the same today. It's not that bad, but it's kinda of questionable. Have you ever liked the scene from a cartoon that's just so fire that you just want to take it and make it into your own? Oh, you know, like how you, if you were like in the AV club or the production club, and then this teacher's like, okay, children, you got a project to do over the break. You got to film yourself doing something. I don't know. You can, you can be having sex with a large girl. I don't know. Well, apparently these group of kids was filming a scene off of Spongebob and if you don't know the scene then let me just play it on my phone real quick so we can get this wagon of floating here and here we go you asked me that already now quit wasting my time hey you can't talk to my son that way who do you think you are I'm Plankton you old hand Sun smells like boogers! Hey, you can't talk to my wife that way! What do you think this is? I think it's time for you to lose some weight, fatty! <laughs> 
That's what it is. Hey, you can't talk to my grandson like that. Someone ought to put you in a mental hospital. Someone should put you in a box floating down the river, Grandma. You're probably right. You people are crazy. Now, apparently the original video was named Planting Roasting the Whole Family with a Crying Emoji. <laughs> you guys see the caption. This nigga planked and roasted the hell out of them. My peanuts and marshmallows. Damn, boy. And I sound like a African-American redneck here, so I'm just gonna, just gonna show the video. Apparently they took these people by the name of F S F H S Media, I'm sure the H S is some kind of high school concern this takes place in the school. And according to the according to the like ratio here, um it's kind of fair. Fair. There's thirty one dislike though with fifty likes at the same time. So let's let's give it a watch, shall we? Um, excuse me, mister. Excuse me, mister. <laughs> oh, you got to look, look at his kid. His ears. His ears. <laughs> his ears. Oh, there's so much Spanish fans in my phone right now. Really. Oh, give me a sec. Put this kid though. <laughs> Look at his eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> his chin. <laughs> Just looks so ugly. Excuse me, mister. What do you want, kid? Do you have a p pencil? A pencil? Alright, so I, I got. Yeah, a pencil. So, I gotta pause right there, or usually you're supposed to pause a second back. Not only this kid is looking... <laughs> this kid looks mad freaky, though. Oh, this kid has me shooken. <laughs> but then you got, then you got this kid who, this ginger kid, who's being just a try hard playing, trying to speak in that plate in town, but you can't. Matt, why are you not eating your food? Because I'm recording. They can't pause nothing. This is a fake crime series. Anyway, this 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 boy is trying to be in that fake this fake plankton like voice, you know? Trying to be that wannabe plankton. And then suddenly and then suddenly this kid comes in and said, Can I borrow a pento? You you can know that his Mexican is thick. He is the one who is hiding from Donald Trump because at this moment Donald Trump is just hunting down he's like yeah I see his kid he's gonna be mine I'm gonna deploy him like never before his his acting is such ass and his his earlobes his, his earlobes is bigger than Melania Trump than my dear ex-wife's nipples Do I look like I have a pencil? I don't know. Do you have a pencil? Come on, kid. You already asked me that. Stop wasting my time. Hey, you can't talk to my son like that. <laughs> Lady, she, he is not your son. <laughs> look. What? I, I can't just look at this Mexican. I can't look at this Mexican kid with a straight face. I can't. But then here comes this, this flat chest slut uh, with them big ass glasses and that hair. Basic white, basic white bitch kind of look. Well, come to my, you can't talk to my son like that. For one, <laughs> for one, if if, if you are have, if you birthed him and you're that age, you you seriously should consider some help. Who do you think you are? I'm Rogers, you old hag, and your son smells like fungus. Hey, you can't talk to my wife like that. What do you think? Photo, 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 photo. Hold up, hold up. I, it would extend the video more, but I'm not feeling like it because my food's going to get cold eventually. Um, I have that hat. I would love to show it. I say, you know, I can play hardball too. I can play hardball too, but what's about to happen next is going to be edgy.
This is time for you to lose some weight, fatty. That's what it is. Hey, you're. Oh. My nigga, you just got roasted. Oh, 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 oh. I will play the clip, but I'm just trying to speed this song along, you know. Make this quick. Apparently, the apparently the little Trump train pedestrian got roasted. He he ain't even fat, but but okay. And here comes the granny. Oh. You can't talk to my grandson like that. You belong in a mental hospital. Oh yeah. That's not how it. That's not how it says. Hey, you can't talk to my son like that. Someone should put you in a mental hospital. Grandma, you belong in a box, six feet under. God, you people are crazy. That's not how you do it. Why, you little? <laughs> you should learn some manners. Um, so how about that pencil? <laughs> <laughs> this Mexican kid just comes talking about you on a pencil. Still acts for a pencil. It's 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 kind of odd, but you know, at the end of the day, it's harmless. It's meant to be a cute little PSA for something. It's relatable with all that stuff. Give me a second and go fetch my food, and we'll be back after this little brief silence right here. Wow, them fries be tasting good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. That silence may have been pretty too quick, but hey, I said it was brief. All right, let's get back to what we're doing here today. In honor of Easter, I decided to do something so basic it ain't even funny. We're gonna count down the top five, fav my top five favorite rabbit cartoon characters, in order. So let's get cracking here. Ready for battle, bro? Never readier. Let's do this. Battle of Ow! No fear! Best 501 out of a thousand? Sure, we've got the time. Ah, uh, yes. Who doesn't remember this show? Nobody? Uh, well, anyway, this is Yin Yang Yo. It's a cartoon that aired on Toon Disney a bit of... Basically, ironically, yeah, it aired like in the last year of Toon Disney before it became Disney XD. And it was true that they said there was an episode that aired during the Disney XD. During the time of the Disney XD rebrand. But apparently I never saw the episode or didn't know its name. Nevertheless, this show was very popular and very famous on, on the JetX block of Team Disney and well, honestly, I missed it. If you're wondering, this show was created by Bob Boyle, who is famous for other stuff like writing for Very Odd. Um, what, is doing? what is this? Is it dirty? So you have like a lot of writing and mostly directing some content under his belt for a while. The reason why I picked these two is because uh, that well basically they have your typical brother and sister type of relationship. By that I mean they that they they act like brothers, they sound like brothers. they I mean, I, I sound retarded, let me start over. They act like siblings, they sound like sib what your siblings would po possibly sound like. And most of all, they treat, they treat each other like siblings. Anyway, these two, born to a karate master, which is, I shit you not, a panda, 
they both learn how to do karate in the most most stupidest way ever by just by just doing by just doing that kind of karate kid stuff you know the wax on wax off type of stuff uh, it was a good series I miss it so this I have to say was one of Bob Bob Boyle's only greatest things because after this <laughs> a huge downfall happened a very huge one all right Let's go to our next one. Happy Tree Friends itself is a series where it takes all these little forest creature animals.